everybody, welcome back to Tri-Cities Community Television. My name is Patrick McCarthy and today we're with Melissa Berger, who is a local artist, or at least a supporter of local artists with some of your initiatives uh, in the Tri-Cities. Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, like I said, you're, you are the artist, the one, and the only one. So. Well, just, just at this time. At <laughs> this time, formerly known as Melissa. Right. But um, I know that um, one of the recent projects you've done in uh, in the Tri Cities is behind the scenes. It was sort of a chance to, hold, uh, I guess, profile five other artists, which I found very impressive. That an artist is trying to highlight other artists. Can you tell us a bit about that that project? Yeah. Um, so I think that you know before before I even talk about that project, um, I'll mention that I volunteered with the Surrey Art Gallery Association. And I was the vice president there um, for a couple of years. And then I started running events. Um, and I also revamped the art rental program. Um, but all those things, what I sort of learned in the process was um, the importance of honoring people for their hard work and, and the contributions they make. Um, and, you know, I'm like, like everybody, I, I like to do things to help. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good that other people are you know, doing well. And so in my work through the Surrey Art, Art Gallery Association, um, you know, I really got to feel good about what I was doing. And that really sort of pushed me to look at other ways that I could help artists. Um, and then I met Kamran Safari and he offered to do a video for myself, um, which I haven't posted yet. But the process was really, um, it felt really good. It felt really, um, you know, like, I don't know how to say it. Like I, like I was standing on my two feet as an artist. Like it really just kind of made me feel like I was a professional artist. And I, I think I wanted other artists to feel that, you know, to have people interested in what they have to say and what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I looked at the Port Coquitlam grants while I was sitting on the round cultural round table once a month. And heard about these grants and then i thought you know let's see if we can get this opportunity for other artists and yeah. then we met <laughs> we met yes like i said i mean i i think it was uh for me anyway i i always think back to you know art you know typically you know artists make more money when they're dead than they are when they're alive i mean that's that's a sad thing to say but but it seems like you know if you go back to the 17th 18th century artists would band together to show their work to kind of draw in this there was kind of a marketing salon yeah, yeah salon experience yeah but I, I kind of saw that your piece was kind of you know you're leveraging grant money but it was just a salon experience especially when we, we just finished a, a kind of a premiere night you know for the five videos and how did that feel at the premiere night how did you feel it was like was it as a perfect ending to your to your to your project yeah, I think it was good. Um, you know, the, the project was really supposed to just be online and then they kind of squeezed us in uh, into the, the city space there. But yeah, it felt really good. It felt it really felt like everybody there was my family. Yeah. Like, you know, we almost all knew each other um, and it was just it was just great to sort of see the fruition of that. Um, and then just the gratefulness of, of the artists is really what's important, right? Because now they're adding those to their YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channels and their websites, um, and cross posting and sharing. And, and so, you know, I think that's the most important thing. And then talk a little about funding for artists. I mean, it's one of the things you, you, you mentioned in some of our conversations is that typically if you're part of a society, you know, you can get funding, but mm -hmm. as an artist, you know, to get a, to get grant money for a project. Yeah, it's very difficult. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, so there's the Council for the Canadian, or sorry, Canadian Council for the Arts, which is a separate like um, nationwide funding body. But most specific um, cities have uh, community grants, but they're not for individuals. It's usually you have to be part of a not for profit, um, or just being yeah. Usually you have to be part of something like that. Um, or part of it, you could be a city worker maybe and then want to get more training. But Port Coquitlam was really, really unique in that sense because I could say, hey, like I actually want to do these things for my community that are outside of myself. Um, obviously a little bit of recognition is nice, but uh, you know, it's, it's really about providing content for the community. Um, and then in terms of um, funding for artists, there is a lot of money for the um, Canadian Council for the Arts but it's really tough to get. Um, it's really, really tough. I mean, you, don't, you have to have uh, 
post-secondary, so you need to be classically trained at an institution and, you know, CVs, like it's, it's quite the, the intense procedure to even get accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're sponsored by TELUS Optic TV for this segment, so we know how tough grant funding is right? to get general. So I'm, I'm going to hit them I'm, up I'm next. I'm plugging it. I'm plugging it again. You know, <laughs> yeah, Jeff's yeah. all happy that I said it twice. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I think, though, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, I, you use the word, you know, uh, kind of trained or, or, or we use classically trained. Yeah. I, I find that to be almost like artists impede themselves by that. They see, you see great work and they say, oh, I didn't go to this school or this place. And, and you're looking at it thinking, you know, my son will say, well, you go on YouTube, you can pretty well learn any yeah. technique. So yeah. how do you feel that, that two questions, one is that's kind of elitistic kind of approach in some ways with art. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about that? I mean, I think it's that way with everything. I mean, any job I've ever worked, I learned all the skills at that job. I mean, I still went and got all the training. I did the $40,000 degree and yeah. It's kind of a joke because, yeah, I could just have done that all myself online. Um, so I think that's everywhere. And I don't know that it's, you know, artists making the elite system more that it's just the system that's in place. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned how many artists now don't uh, make money till they're dead. But actually with the creation of social media, some artists, you know, some might argue some not very good artists yeah. are doing fantastic. Yeah. You know, they're they're making a ton of cash. So I think we're living in like a very unique um, and special time in that we can be seen because it's a numbers game with art, right? You know, if you can get a few thousand people online to see your work, you're more likely to, to make a sale. Yeah, so, so I think that, that you have to be more tech savvy, I guess, as, a, as an yeah. artist. You have to kind of show the process yeah. you, be, you become the the artist like who you are and that's a totally different skill like i was 26 going to ubc i didn't have facebook or instagram and all my 18 year old friends in class were like you got to do this you got to put your art on that and yeah. there you go so thank goodness for those young kids <laughs> you learned right so so tell us about you as the artist you know what is it tell us a bit about your art and what what kind of you know, yeah strive uh, so I do a lot of different things. Um, right now I'm releasing a collection called Meadow Gems. Um, they're just small paintings, oil on wood panel, um, 20 paintings. Took me about two months to make. Um, but I'm just trying different things. So right now my work is uh, focusing more on color, form, line, um, and it's somewhat... Um, realistic but it's not like it's it's abstracted realism uh i also do animals i've done some portraits um my realism makes me a lot of money i shouldn't say a lot of money but substantial but i'm you know i think that it, as an artist it, it's it's easy to look at a photo and paint like for anybody that that wants to try. Like, I believe anybody can do art. And I think just like transferring an image with paint, like, yeah, you have to understand how to mix and apply. Like there is some knowledge, but I, I think anybody can do it. Um, and realism is quite easy, but ultimately I think that um, self-expression is gonna be different from that. And so I'm just trying different things right now. Um, and for me, it's a meditative process. Uh, when I paint, it's very grounding. I mean, not all the times, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I, I throw that canvas and I, I'm done and I start a new painting. Um, just flip it over. Start right? It, yeah. yeah, yeah, just paint on the back. So the greatest art is behind art. Right? <laughs> yeah, they say. yeah, yeah. How, sure. how did COVID, uh, I know COVID was tough on the arts community, but how was it for you? Oh man, I did great. That was my best year yet. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody was sitting at home looking at their blank walls, you know, whereas like I'm usually sitting at home. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, well, you know, that I don't know if you noticed, but like all the home hardware stores, like people were just lined up to do their gardens and, and do home renovations. So for me, it was great. But I was online just just showing tons of art. And so yeah, that, that was really good. But now I think uh, as we're into a recession, um, I think it's it's going to be particularly tough on artists. So, but I mean, I think the issue as well with being an artist is just the at least for myself and many others that I know, um, 
it's inconsistent. You know, I'll have a really good month and then nothing the next month. Sometimes I'll go two months just dry. That's probably about once a year. It's just like nothing. So just being like really careful with our money is, is really important as an artist. I think even the best artists, because you can be huge one day and then nothing the next. And that's the other issue too, because it's, you, you run out of your audience. So how do we keep building clients and how do we keep, keep being seen by new people? Because it's great that I might sell, you know, 50 paintings, but now those clients might be exhausted, right? So there's, there's a lot of things that come up uh, with being an artist in the business of art. So, and, and for this region, and a question about, uh, you know, you talk about Surrey, but uh, like the art scene changing in Port Quitlam. Your, your, your piece is behind the scenes, you know, which is really Port Quitlam, but mm -hmm. do you see a lot of migration of artists into, you know, out of Vancouver into these regions? Are you seeing that, the turnover where this is becoming more artistic because of that? I think the art is different. I do know quite a few artists that have moved here. Um, Susan Gregg and, um, I mean, it was just Susan Gregg. I, I think I know of another one that might be moving here, but you know, we've got Michael King, Alt Chan, all those artists that, that we made the series with. Um, but the, the art's different. I think in Vancouver, um, a lot of the, the bigger artists go there. Um, but it's a lot more modern art, uh, sort of, you know, abstracts. Um, whereas some of the, most of the artists here in, in Port Coquitlam, I think, focus a lot on nature um, or in plain air, painting outside, um, animal conservation. So it's just, it's sort of different, I, I think. And it's also pork equipment's just tiny too, isn't it? Sixty-five thousand people, so yeah, substantial. Uh, Two hundred fifty thousand, I think, in this area. So yeah, yeah. So uh, last personal question, just around mental health being one of your your key points. Yeah. Just, just. Uh, I mean, it sounds like COVID does not did not affect you in that sense. Not but, financially. Yeah, but but yeah. but you know, the next project or you've got a project that sort of deals with mental health or is a bit about that. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to try and think about, about ways to include the community in things that make me feel better um, and help me with my mental health. Um, and right now, um, you know, I've been talking with uh, a florist who actually lives here in Port Coquitlam because I spent some time in her shop. It's in East Vancouver. But just like the tranquility and like, I didn't realize how much I liked flowers. But like being in that space and like the vibe was very like I could I could have just it was nature, but right? But yeah, 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 yeah. I was like I could I could literally just like I was like I want to work in a floral shop. Like this place is amazing. Um and then I've been checking out and looking and, and some florists do these amazing installations where they're like hanging from the ceiling. Um so I'm speaking with her and I'm I'm hoping to um apply and may or may not get the funding, but do something around the holidays. Um, and then, you know, a part of that would be to, um, engineer something that can hold water for the installation that isn't environmentally damaging. Cause I guess right now they often use like this, this green sponge that's made out of plastic and it's really bad for the environment. Um, so I'm speaking with my partner to see if there's something that we can maybe engineer that. I don't know if it's like a biosphere where it has condensation, like something else. Um, but yeah, and then and then hopefully work with the community and have them help us build it, mm. right? And and learn about flowers and about uh, arrangements and. But we'll see. I've I've got a million other ideas, so <laughs> that's just the one that's at the top of my mind, and hopefully can continue um, doing more of these behind the scenes projects. Uh, I'd like to interview musicians and poets, actors, um, really just anybody that's that's in the creative realm. So, and how do we find more about your art and, and where do we find you? Yeah, so um, on Instagram and Facebook, it's Melissa Fine Art. And on um, the web, my website, it's Melissa Berger Fine Art. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Melissa, thank you very much for yeah, coming in. Doing the handshake right. is now yeah, we're yeah. kind of in the denial we're still in COVID, so right. get the sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks that. for having me.
So that's Melissa Berger. She's a local artist. Uh, she happens to hang out occasionally in the Tri-Cities. And, uh, and of course, you can check out some of her work behind the scenes, uh, which is shot for five artists in Port Quitlam. It's on the website for Poco Arts Council. Or you can check the link at Tri-Cities Community Television. Thank you again for watching. Thanks, folks. That's good. Oh.